Welcome. So normally I'm doing PC gamer tech related videos. Today I have to change the oil on a 2017 Nissan Rogue. So we're going to change the oil on a 2017 Nissan Rogue. But before we get started, uh, I've arranged everything on the table here in order of necessity, recommended, and nice to have. So before we get started, make sure you have your necessities. Check the part numbers and serial numbers and the type of oil you have. Make sure you have the right quantity of oil. And throughout all of this, consult your user manual that come, that's in your glove box. It has an immense amount of information, even DIY instructions for what we're about to do. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna come back and go through each one of these tools and kind of go over why I like to use them or why I have them. Everything here is going to be linked below in the description if you wanna buy it. Most of it you can get on Amazon next day or go to Harbor Freight, something like that. So uh, see you right back here when we're done. All the different stages of this project are gonna be separated in the chapters of this video. So if you're looking for something specific, like where the oil filter is located, just check the chapter list there. All right, so we have my mother-in-law's 2017 Nissan Rogue. I'm told we don't know when the last oil change was done or any service for that matter. So we're gonna do everything we can today, as well as the oil change with what we have on hand, including cleaning that battery lead. It's like yummy blue foam. So we got all our tools set up out here, everything we're gonna need, including a way to make sure there's no oil overspray on the ground. Luckily, this is high enough off the ground where we can get down there without having to lift the car up. Well. Now that I'm under here, I can see I was very wrong. This is not taller than my cross truck. I've got my oil catch set up so that as I'm reaching to get the last few threads out, the oil should go straight out into it, and then I can just pull this forward a little bit. I'm going to let the bolt go into the pan. It will not fall inside, but I'm not going to try and catch it. I'm just going to get it out of the way. It's been two years. This is not going to come easy. Oh, there we go. All right. So just got it loosened. I'm going to pull this into place. See how much. Nope. Sometimes they get stuck midway through. There's no real leakage yet. But we got the first hard part done. I'll switch to my gloves just in case. Yep, starting to come smooth. Go fast. Got the bolt off, and there she goes. I don't know if you can see that. So the trick is to turn the wheels all the way to the right. It gives you a little bit more access into the wheel well here. And you're going to remove this flap. You do that by removing these little pegs. You pull the center piece out and they hop right out the hole. You can put them back in later by just pushing in the center piece there. Let's see uh, where I've taken them out. I'm going to put, get a few more. Just right inside there is our oil filter, easily accessed. And it's hard to read, but that says July 18th, 2022, two years ago. 15 minutes later, it's still dripping. And if I kind of just push on the car and move it around a little bit and rock it back and forth, that getting more coming out. All right, while I'm down here waiting for that to finish draining, I've got the drain plug, and see the crush washer on here is pretty well mangled. And I'm probably going to need some tools to get the rest off. Looks like there might be more than one on here. Let's, look at that. Had to bring it inside. Going with wire cutters. Come here. All right, 
So I've got this all cleaned. Time to put the new crush washer on. According to my reading, this flat side here goes against the oil pan. And you'll see here, it's a little tough. It requires being, it's, it's a very tight fit. I almost have to screw it on. It's not the greatest camera angle, sorry. There we go. Explains why it was so tight. There we go. There we go, hand tighten. Move the spray out of the way. I'm just gonna get this hand tightened for now. We'll come back with a torque wrench in a little bit. I don't wouldn't I wouldn't know if I call this a trick, but what I do is I take something sharp, like a nail punch or a nail, and I poke a hole in the oil filter to drain it out uh, before taking it off. Because if you ever seen someone take one of these off, it just spills everywhere and got a mess to clean up. I don't know if this is right or wrong, but this is what I do. I learned it from a Ford mechanic. If anyone wants to criticize me. So while we wait for the oil filter to drain out completely, we're going to switch our attention back to the main oil drain plug and use the torque wrench to torque down that plug. All right, so the correct torque for the oil drain is 25 pounds. So we're going to roll this back. There's 20. And then we want to line up the 5 with the 20 there. Boom. You can kind of see where my reach is at. Oh wow, that's not gonna work. So as we saw there, my torque wrench is too long. So what I'm gonna have to do is go with regular one kind of just wing it what feels like 25 pounds huh hopefully it doesn't drip as much all right admittedly it's a little slippery now First thing we want to do is mark today's date on it. Second thing, take some fresh oil and lubricate the silicone seal. This way it doesn't get stuck to the body of the car with extreme heat. We're gonna hand tighten our New oil filter. Under the hood of the car, you're going to find the oil fill cap here, a little to the left of center. Just like on the oil filter, there's a rubber gasket right here. You can feel free to lube that as well. Not the threads, but that. Consulting the owner's manual, and you'll find there's a lot of great info in here. We can see that we're gonna use OW20 oil with an oil filter, which is what we did replace, 4.6 liters. 
if you're not doing the oil filter, just 4.3. Now there's all different kind of fil uh, funnels that you could use. I got one here. Uh, I don't know how long it is, but the key thing is you want it sturdy. You don't want it to fall over. Get a long one. Um, that could be bad. Or get someone to help you if, if necessary. All right, so it needs 4.6 liters, and this is a 4.73 liter bottle, which means uh, I'm just gonna eyeball it until I'm almost empty, but not everything. All right, we're all full. We greased our little O-ring around the cap. I'm just gonna hand tighten that back on. Give it a good, strong twist. Now, I'm also, I'm also opting to use an engine degreaser to clean around that area, just in case there was any overspill anywhere. Also, it just looks real nice. Yeah, it looks a little cleaner, a little nicer. Also, I cleaned off the coolant reservoir, chiefly so I could read it easier. And you can see there it's below, you can see there it's above the minimum fill line, so we're good. Now, at any point, if you have overfilled any of these fluids, windshield wiper, oil, coolant, whatever it is, you can get one of these pumps, uh, stick it down in there, empty it out into a vessel, just make sure it's clean, don't cross-contaminate uh, any of these fluids, that could be pretty bad. All right, now it's time to put this cover in the wheel well back over our oil filter. All right, now, if you remember way back when, I had broken a couple of these taking it off. You can buy some, I'll link it below. But these were from O'Reilly's, but you can get a bunch more for cheaper on Amazon. Replacing these as needed is extremely important. They're fragile, but they are vital in keeping the underside of your car protected. You want to be careful. Some of these are overlapping with other plastic. Some of them are going straight into the body of the vehicle. One, two, three, four, five, and six. I'm really connecting it on that side down there. There she goes. All right, next up is our air filter. The box is on the right side of the bay. You're gonna have two clips, one down the right side, one a little higher up on the left. It looks like that's supposed to clip into something. Let's take a look. Let's take a peek. Pop that one off. Pop that off. Alright, so that is for this coming to the box. Alright, there's two pinch clips right here. I think I'm gonna take this whole piece off here. Pinch that and lift up. Let's see. Oh, baby. 
I don't even have to take it out to know that baby's dirty. Look at that. And you just take that out. Let's compare that to our new one. Stark difference. And you see they're angled. Make sure the angles match as we put it back in. Honestly, if you want to take a vacuum cleaner, get in there and do it. Just a lot of debris. Might be a good idea. Alright, now you don't want to go back in. Oh, there you go. Clip, clip, slide this puppy just right back in the groove there. See there's a groove, it matches up with this groove here, slides on down. Uh, non-conductive, don't use a wire brush. It's a battery. We've got a little vacuum cleaner here as well. Oh, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that and hope everything went successful for you. Uh, I do probably five or six oil changes or various bits of maintenance a year, nothing major. So the tools that I've selected are things I know that they're not the highest of quality, I didn't go out the snap on. They're just what I need to get the job done periodically as a DIYer. So let's go through what I've got here, what I use today, and I'll talk about some of the reasons why. Uh, obviously, uh, I, I just haven't been using this for a while and it's kind of my go-to. If you have a particular oil brand you're um, loyal to, go for it. No, uh, no judgments there. Uh, oil filters. I go for the middle of the road because if you go to like a Riley's, they tell you the lowest price is this, the highest price is this. And I, I tend to go with the middle of the road. Although from now on, I'm actually going to switch to K&N for no other reason than they include the little window sticker that you can write on and put up on your windshield, which I think every oil filter uh, manufacturer should include that. But the key piece of equipment I got uh, is here and I got it linked below, your oil drip pan. This one is lovely because it's skinny and isn't taking up a lot of space under the, the vehicle. This funnel actually has risers. So if I wanna get it closer to the oil pan on like say a pickup truck, it'll allow me to adjust that height. It's great for that. Highly recommend this one. Uh, two different kinds of funnels, generally because you need it to be stable. You don't want it to tip over while you're pouring. So I, that's why I have both of these. You never know how it's gonna sit in the hole and you're not necessarily gonna have someone with you uh, per se. The crush washers. Sometimes it might actually be better just to go down to the dealership if your car is relatively new and just ask them. They're gonna charge you out the butt for it. Uh, this was a few bucks on Amazon and I got a whole bunch of them but for my Subaru I went to Subaru and I think I paid like ten dollars for two one time so it it varies these oil filter removal wrenches they're perfect for the job you're only ever gonna use them like twice a year is it worth spending a lot on them that's a personal preference I got this as part of a kit, this three-piece kit and a funnel uh, that came with it. This attachment tool I like a lot more than you've probably seen the handles with a loop. I'll put a picture up here. Ew! It's just a handle that looks like a strap to put on the oil filter or take them off. It might be hard to get into certain places with that. This and you have the option of different sized ratchets I think is a, a great alternative. 
Like I said, this comes as a kit. I got it off Amazon. I think it's like 20, 25 bucks. I'll link it below. Uh, absolutely. Same thing with Amazon, torque wrench. This is, I think, about 15 inches long. It's come in handy in a lot of places. Uh, not super fancy, but I probably use it a, a you know, total of 15 times a year. You, ha you can get different adjustment sizes. This is a half inch socket, but you can get these step downs for things like I did today. But as we saw, it, this one's too big for under my car. If all you're ever gonna be using it for is something like uh, automotive use, getting a shorter one might be more useful for you, but I have this one linked down below as well. Uh, I think earlier in the video I said $15. These you can actually get for as cheap as 10 or less. They're super handy, and if you have some other kind of pump thing in the house, you can just use it instead of this. Just make sure it's clean, uh, wonderful. What did you think of my puncturing the oil filter trick. Something you might want to try. Uh, I did use a nail punch, but you could also just use a nail. Your call. Um, there, a lot of car manufacturers are changing where they put the oil filter. My Subaru has it on top of the engine facing up like this. The Nissan has it like this. A lot of cars have it underneath like that. Uh, so do what works best for you. Moving on to these various sprays I was using throughout the process. Do be careful, all of these in some way, shape, or form are flammable and sub subject to high pressure volatility if left in the heat. So be careful of that. Read all the instructions on here. Uh, brake cleaner is designed for cleaning brakes. You can use it for other things, um, but be careful. It's also not very good on plastic, which is why I have this green one. Green one is a, just a general contact cleaner. It evaporates and has a, a bit of an odor like the brake cleaner, but isn't gonna be damaging to plastics. I made this mistake trying to use this on some plastic parts for a computer uh, and the plastic got all wonky, so I went with this. Good to have around. Engine degreaser, be very careful with this. It's not something you want just lying around or scrubbing off. You actually do wanna rinse it uh, when at all possible, and it is electrically conductive. Uh, this isn't, but this is. So, like I said, read the labels, be careful what you're using it for, uh, wear a mask uh, when necessary or when you think it's probably a good idea. The mini vacuum cleaner. I get a lot of use out of this. This was actually a gift from my girlfriend for my PC building hobby because it's also a blower. And I got a link uh, down below to where you could buy one of these, but also a video uh, photographer, YouTuber, um, TC Connor. He does uh, a lot of fun photography things and he reviewed one of these once. You can check that out, but they're great. Whenever the opportunity arises, check YouTube, see if something that needs to be done to your car or something you can do. It's such a great experience to just grab some tools, do something yourself, and be like, ah, I don't need to pay somebody 200 bucks to poke around under the hood for me. So I hope all of this was useful for you. Uh, I might do some more automotive stuff, who knows? I really enjoyed doing this. Thanks for watching, and uh, see you next time.